Hey everyone, welcome to this week's edition of After Effects Tips and Tricks. I'm Cameron and this is Motion Science. Today, I want to talk a little bit about the 3D camera. I've had a whole lot of response, really great response from the 3D camera techniques video that I put up on YouTube and the website, motionscience.tv. Uh, the response has been great. It's been up for about a year now, but it's just now starting to get a lot of attention. So I thought this week would be kind of cool to uh, talk a little more about the 3D camera uh, and another function of the 3D camera that some of you may know about, um, beginners probably don't know about. Uh, but I want to show you. So what I have here is a video clip in my dining room that I shot um, on my iPhone 7 and it's this uh, pretty cool statue I've got. I've got a bride and groom. This is the bride and she's just sitting on the table and uh, what I wanted to show you is that you can shoot video or you can take any video that's already been shot and you can easily track the footage and uh, apply graphics to it but I'm also going to take it um, one step beyond that. So this is two parts. So I'm gonna go through this kind of quick. I'm trying to keep these videos fairly short. So what I'm gonna do first is all you have to do is you bring in your footage. I imported it here. I brought it into a new composition. Here it is, iPhone 7 footage. I just click once on the piece of footage, go up to animation, track camera. And what it's gonna do is After Effects starts tracking the data from the camera and it's tracking to try and solve a 3D camera from the footage. So depending on how long the clip is, this can go quickly or it can take a little bit of time. What's cool about this effect as well is that it analyzes in the background. So you can see here it says analyzing background. So I could actually go and work on other things in my uh, After Effects project file while this is running. And uh, I don't just have to sit here and wait for it to be done. So up here, you can see the percentage. It's 54% of the way. It's on frame 185, 24 seconds remaining. Yada, yada, yada. I'm gonna pause it real quick and come back. Okay, so it's finished analyzing, but now it's solving the camera. And boom, there it is. The anal analyzing and solving is done. And here's all the track points now that we can see in the footage. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, one thing you want to check whenever you track a camera is you want to go into advanced and you want to look right here at the average error. You can see it says 0 0.99 pixels. I always aim for one pixel or below for the average area error. If you get up in like three, four, five pixel errors, it's not going to look too great. Um, sometimes two pixel errors can be okay, but typically I try to stay below one pixel error. error. Uh, if it goes and it uh, comes above one pixel, sometimes you can click detailed analysis and it'll reanalyze in more detail and sometimes you'll get a better average error. Sometimes you'll get a worse average error. You can also click on auto detect and click one of these options. Um, sometimes it makes your tracking better, sometimes it doesn't. It just kind of depends. It's all trial and error with this uh, tracker. So anyways, I've got the footage tracked and I'm just going to go up here. I'm not going to go into too much detail about what this can do, but if you see here, there's three points right here. And if I go in between them, you see that circle. So if I click to highlight them and then I right click, I can click, I can select one of these options. I am going to select a shadow catcher camera and light. So what I've got now is a shadow catcher, a light that we can't see and a 3D camera. So I'm going to uh, go in here. I'm going to select this object I used in the 3D camera techniques video. I'm going to paste it in here. And I am going to parent the footage to the shadow catcher. And when I hold down shift and parent, watch where it's the, uh, watch the graphics snap to the shadow catcher. 
See that? So now it's took, it's taken on the rotation, uh, the orientation. So watch this. So now it looks like the graphic is actually sitting on top of the statue. So the graphic is 3D and it's taking advantage of the 3D camera that's in the scene. Oh, then we run out of footage here. But yeah, there you go. This is a real time. Pretty believable. Pretty cool. So there you go. That's a pretty easy way to add graphics to footage that you shoot. So let me uh, let me take this one step further now. So you saw what we can do by just adding the graphics in. Well, I'm gonna jump back into this comp here. This is a uh, comp that was in 3D Camera Techniques where I was talking about the Orbit camera. And uh, you may remember this from the video series, but essentially I talked about the different types of cameras in uh, that you can uh, simulate with After Effects camera. And this is the Orbit. So, pretty cool move, but, but an interesting, th like if you wanted to really add some interesting camera movement to your animation, and let's say you wanted a handheld camera look in your animation. Well, you know that you can take the camera, you can click on the position property and you can add a wiggle expression uh, to this property. I talk about this in the 3D camera video, but if I add a wiggle, Okay, so I've added the wiggle expression to the position property and uh, we can do more things with the wiggle expression, but to make it look better, but you'll see here. So like, let's say we're just trying to emulate a simple handheld camera move. Uh, this does an okay job. And like I said, I can separate dimensions of the position and uh, make it look better. But another way to approach this is to take the camera that we tracked this one and apply this camera motion to that graphic element. So all I have to do to uh, accomplish that is to copy my shadow catcher, which effectively I'm treating it as a null and my 3D camera. I'm gonna copy those two. I'm gonna turn off this camera. I'm gonna paste my camera in my null. And turn this off. So right here, we, uh, we lose the, uh, the graphic because of the camera movement. So an easy way to fix this is to parent the camera to the shadow catcher. And then I'm going to reposition the shadow catcher to match like where the graphic is at. So 960 by 540. And it looks like it's at negative 250. There we go. And then I'm also going to zero out the orientation properties. On. Going to position it. So my scenes in there around a little bit and see where I'm at here. I, I want to I'm also going to change the position to zero, bring it closer, maybe 250. Maybe 500. Just trying to center it up here. Turn off my null and I'm gonna ram or I'm gonna preview this and see what it looks like. 
Okay, so here you go. So this is uh, the camera movement on my graphic, which, I mean, again, it just looks really, it looks real. It looks like, uh, it doesn't look like a simulated CG camera. It just looks like a real camera shooting a graphic. So there's a lot of applications for this, and I just wanted to show you uh, just the general idea so you got kind of get what I'm talking about here. Just, uh, it opens up a new possibility for what you can do with the 3D camera. Go out and shoot some real footage, track it, and then apply it to your graphic scenes and see what you come up with. So uh, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, this quick lesson. Uh, and uh, until next time, I'm Cameron, and this is Motion Science. <laughs>